I used to have this bodybuilder friend. She would literally eat like crickets out of her Ziploc bag. It was like the full body air fried crickets. I was like, yeah, <laughs> so gross. And the eyes were blue and red color. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Tian. So there's been a lot of talk about sustainability these days. And in the realm of health and fitness, that pertains to our diets. A lot of people have been turning to plant-based or sustainable diets. And these are for two reasons. One reason is sustainability. Now with climate change, global warming, we all realize that animal products are not sustainable. Meat production has been linked to things like the rise in greenhouse gas emission, deforestation, and just in general is bad for our environment. Another reason is also the health benefits of a plant-based diet or in general eating less meat. There's been a lot of research that shows that a plant-based diet is going to lower your risk of things like heart disease, cholesterol, all these other health problems that you can get in future that have been linked to the high consumption of meat. Because of the change in our diets and also all these ethical concerns, a lot of companies have now come up with sustainable food options. And these are foods of the future. Not all of them are plant-based, but some of them are touted as superfoods that are nutritious. So today, I'm going to be trying out some of these interesting products and sharing my thoughts. One superfood that has been touted to be highly sustainable and very nutritious for you is insect protein. I know a lot of you might cringe at the thought of it, but people from various cultures have been eating insect proteins for centuries. And all over the world, you know, they have worm protein, they eat bugs. I think I remember being in Thailand once and uh, trying out mealworms before and I thought they were pretty crunchy and delicious. But this is definitely something that's not common in Singapore. One of the most common forms of insect proteins that you can find in the market is cricket protein. Cricket powder or cricket flour is a kind of protein powder that is made out of ground crickets. Cricket protein has been gaining momentum worldwide and people have been using it in things like brownies, cookies, protein bars and protein powders. These crickets come from a cricket farm where it takes less feed to rear crickets as compared to animals, hence leading to lesser greenhouse gases and being more environmentally friendly. Also, cricket powder is high in protein but low in carbs. Cricket protein is considered a complete protein because it contains all the essential amino acids like leucine and tryptophan. Leucine is an essential amino acid that is crucial for muscle growth and you can't find a lot of it in plant-based foods. It also contains tryptophan which helps to regulate your sleep because it produces the hormone melatonin. Interestingly, chicken breast has a high amount of tryptophan so it's very cool that we can now get it from crickets. So today, I'll be trying out cricket protein in the form of protein bars. These cricket protein bars are from a local company called Ultimate Nutrition. Basically, they create protein bars made out of cricket protein. They're not for sale yet, but they've kindly sent us a couple of samples to try. They have five different flavors on their website, but today we are trying the peanut butter cinnamon flavor and the double chocolate flavor and comparing them to regular protein bars of similar flavors. I don't know what to feel. I appreciate the sentiment of cricket protein. I, I do. But just the thought of like a cricket farm. Like, I don't know. Just give me the EBGBs. I have actually tried crickets before. Um, I used to have this bodybuilder friend. She would literally eat like crickets out of her Ziploc bag. It was like the full body like air fried crickets. I was like, yeah, <laughs> so gross. And the eyes were blue and red colour. <laughs> I cannot. She did make me try it. So I bit like the wing, but I just can't with the face. I think maybe in powder form and put in a protein or in a cookie, I think it's okay. But if you ask me to eat it in its full form, I just get the EVGBs. I, I cannot look at it. Over here, I'm trying the peanut butter cinnamon flavoured cricket bar and I couldn't find the exact same flavour in a regular protein bar so over here, I'm just trying the regular peanut butter one. Visually, the regular protein bar looks a lot smoother and lighter in colour. For the cinnamon protein bar, it looks like there's coconut bits in it and nuts. It doesn't look like a regular protein bar. It looks like one of those energy balls that, you know, they have ground nuts and coconut and oats in them and then it becomes this like Ferrero Rocher looking uh, energy ball. Yeah, it kind of looks like it has the same rustic texture. I'm gonna try the regular protein bar first. Comparing the texture of the cross section, this looks smoother and also it's golden on the inside so it looks more peanut buttery. Whereas the Cricut bar, it doesn't have that same brown golden artificial colour. Okay, let's try it out. 
So, just a bit of background on my experiences with protein bars. I do personally find it very difficult to find a nice tasting protein bar. Yeah, just because when I eat protein bars, it always leaves this very artificial aftertaste in my mouth. So, I just stop eating protein bars altogether because firstly, they're really expensive. And secondly, they have that processed plasticky aftertaste that is just not appealing to me. I'm going to be trying out the peanut butter cricket bar now. So, wish me luck. That was actually really good. I taste the cinnamon. I taste the peanut. It's not overly sweet. It has that little hint, like tinge of sweetness, I guess, from the cinnamon. I just, in general, love everything about the combinations of textures. And it feels homemade. So it feels like somebody made it for you. And, and that, to me, is always like, very nice out of a dessert. If you did not tell me that there were crickets in this and you just served me these two bars, I would actually prefer to eat this one. I actually reached out to the company who made this bar and they said that the ingredients for this were dates, peanuts, cashews, cricket powder and cinnamon powder. So it's a really short list of ingredients. You don't have other, you know, other preservatives or other kinds of weird oils. You really know everything that's on the ingredients list and that's something that I truly appreciate when it comes to natural bars like this. Comparing it with the ingredients list from the regular protein bars, it has like melatonin syrup, and lexatin and vegetable glycerin. So just comparing both of them, I always gravitate towards products with a shorter ingredients list and more importantly, with ingredients that I know, that you know, not with random things that I cannot pronounce. For the Ultimate Nutrition Protein Bar, we have 31 grams of carbs, which is, I would say, pretty high. And 10 grams of sugar, and that to me is always like a red flag. In my opinion, any snack that is 10 grams or more is not the healthiest of snacks. You should not be consuming more than 10 grams of sugar when it comes to processed foods. It does have 15 grams of fat, which is considerably high for a protein bar, but I guess a lot of it comes from your cashews and peanuts, which is high in monosaturated fat, which is which is good fat. One 80 gram bar of this is 310 calories and one serving of this is 230 calories. So if I was to compare both, even though this has higher calories, I know the ingredients list and I like the flavor a lot better. I'm now gonna try the double chocolate cricket bar and comparing it against the regular chocolate protein bar. Cross section, it looks like a typical chocolate bar. Hmm. It's all right, tastes like a regular chocolate bar. I generally like my protein bars with a bit more texture. So if it had like a biscuit or wafers or nuts in them, that would definitely make it taste a lot more appealing to me. Now to the double chocolate cricket bar. <laughs> I don't know if this is just a mental thing, but I taste crickets. <laughs> I'm trying this out and I don't really taste the chocolate. I taste nuts and I taste something else. I taste this very like natural, earthy, uh, raw flavor that I don't know whether or not is cricket. I think it is because I had the regular protein bar and I had this chocolatey flavour. But when I tried the cricket double chocolate bar, I had this expectation that it was going to be this like chocolatey treat. I could not taste the chocolate. It's not sweet, which is a good thing. But all I taste is nuts and this other flavour which I cannot describe. Because I can't really identify the taste, to me, maybe this is what crickets taste like. And okay, honestly, it's not a bad taste. It just tastes different and strange and interesting. And I, it's one of those things that you just have to try it out for yourself and give your own thoughts. But perhaps, you know what? This tastes like the future. So I'm going to read out the ingredients for the double chocolate flavour. It has cocoa powder, maple syrup, rolled oats, cricket flour, almonds and unsalted butter. I do like the texture of it. It's soft and it crumbles very nicely. And I like that they didn't add any white sugar to this. I guess the little sweetness it has comes from the maple syrup. So this has 41 grams of carbs as compared to 24 grams of carbs in the regular protein bar. So this is really high in carbohydrates and I guess that's from the oats. And <gasps> this has 
20 grams of sugars, which is very, very high. The thing with a lot of these regular protein bars is that they're very high in sugar alcohols, and that's kind of what makes it sweet. But with the Cricut protein bar, even though it is a lot higher in sugar, you know that a lot of the sugars are coming from natural sources. If you what to compare just like gram to gram. Yes, this is higher in sugar, but it's natural sweeteners versus sugar alcohols, which don't do anything for you nutritionally. Final thoughts about Cricut protein bars is that they are surprisingly delicious. Initially, I'm not gonna lie, at first I was very hesitant to try it. Before the first bite, I like for a second, I kind of like played like the Cricut sounds in my head. And I just thought of like, this line of crickets like staring at me and <laughs> I felt a bit bad. I think that if you gave me that peanut butter cinnamon cricket bar and asked me for my opinion, I would have said that it was a lovely treat and I wouldn't have even thought that there was cricket powder inside. I wouldn't have even cringed at the idea of it. But for the double chocolate one, I would have preferred for them to use a bit more cocoa powder for them to mask that unfamiliar flavour that I reckon is the taste of crickets. Overall, in the future, if there are more products that have these insect proteins, I would be open to the idea. I like the sentiment of it, but I think it's going to take a while for us all to be okay with the idea of taking in insect protein on a regular basis, you know? Like going to a restaurant and being like, hi, can I please order like a mealworm salad? Or like, hi, can I please order like deep fried um, cockroaches? Over here, I have liquid chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is a green pigment found in plants that is used to convert sunlight into food via photosynthesis. Liquid chlorophyll has become very popular in viral TikTok videos and apparently claims to clear acne and help with weight loss. And I think, you know, you just want to be very careful with the kind of health and fitness advice that you see on TikTok. Um, you know, I've been on TikTok for the past month or so and I can tell you that the amount of fake news out there is really quite scary and I'm just thinking of all these like 14, 15 year olds who are scrolling on TikTok and getting all this advice from these so-called like nutritionists and I can just understand how this can cause a lot of like unhealthy behaviour. So I think you just gotta be very discerning when it comes to getting your, your information on TikTok. And with whatever products you want to try, always do your research. What research can confirm is that it does have some anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. But there is no definitive research that links this to weight loss. Over here, it's known as an internal freshener. When I first saw this, right, I was thinking like, okay, is this like an air freshener? <laughs> like, is this supposed to be like a refill for your purifier or something like that? But no, it is a liquid chlorophyll complex extracted from a premium botanical that eases internal odours. Internal odours meaning it gives you fresher breath, uh, less body odour, and you know, in general, it's just, I don't know, you're gonna smell very nice from inside out. So the direction is to put two teaspoons of it in water. Actually, I love this colour. It's this very deep emerald colour. Hmm. Actually, this is a surprisingly refreshing drink. I was expecting it to taste like wheat grass shots. Like you can really taste the, the grass and the plants. But over here, it tastes minty. I think it's because it is mint flavoured, so it kind of like covers up the fact that it's chlorophyll. I'm not put off by the taste. It's mildly sweet, but I think what you focus on more is that minty aftertaste that you get. It's not something that I would drink casually with my meal, but it's something that I can imagine people who never take like green juice or don't really eat healthy and don't like to take supplements, if you tell them like, okay, the entry level of getting like greens into your day would be to take some chlorophyll in the morning, I can understand why a lot of people will be very open to this idea. Overall thoughts, I totally understand why people like this so much and why it became viral on TikTok. But I think with any kind of like new health products out there, it's very important for you to look at reputable studies and research and not just take advice on face value like from TikTok. Overall, I would not be drinking liquid chlorophyll every day and that's just because I know I can get my micronutrients from eating vegetables and from eating plants and from having my green juices. If I were to compare my green juice which has all this fibre, vitamins, minerals compared to just like this processed sweet chlorophyll drink, my vegetable juice definitely is much better. 
This is Alchemy Fiber from Alchemy Food Tech, a Singapore-based food science company. According to Alchemy Food Tech's website, Alchemy Fiber for Rice is a patented, soluble, plant-based fiber powder that dissolves to form a protective layer around the rice endosperm in your gut. It slows down the digestion rate of high GI white rice to that of brown rice, which means slower glucose release. White rice cooked with alchemy fiber for rice is medium GI, which is the same range as that of brown rice. How I would describe it in a very layman version is that your GI or the glycemic index of food is basically the rate that the sugar gets absorbed into your system. What happens is that with white rice, it has higher GI, which means that the sugar absorption is faster. But with brown rice, which has lower GI, the rate of sugar absorption is a lot slower. So when you use this on white rice, it lowers the GI that is comparable to that of brown rice. The website also says that when added to white rice during the cooking process, alchemy fiber for rice helps to reduce the glycemic index of white rice while increasing the fiber content to 10 times that of white rice. It also claims not to change the taste, texture or appearance of your rice. Apparently, a lot of local restaurants have partnered with this company to incorporate alchemy fiber into their foods. So this might be something you've already tried but don't know. This company also offers products like alchemy fiber flour for baking but today I'll be trying alchemy fiber for rice. If you're wondering how to use it, all you gotta do is add it to your white rice before you start cooking. It's that simple. About one heap tablespoon to one cup of rice. I'm gonna give the alchemy fiber a taste test. I have two bowls of rice, one with and one without. I don't know which is which, but I'm gonna try and see if I can tell a difference. In terms of appearances, they look pretty much identical. Color looks the same, firmness looks similar, texture looks like comparable, so I can't tell. So taste test. I'm gonna try this one. I mean, it tastes like rice. Everyone knows what rice tastes like. I'm gonna test the other one now. <laughs> Just both taste like rice. I can't tell. Neither is stickier, mushier, more dry, starchier even. If I had to guess, this one <laughs> got a tape. Is it alchemy? Oh, okay, yay! <laughs> Honestly, guys, it was just a shot in the dark. I have no clue. Overall, my thoughts is that I absolutely love the sentiment behind this company. Um, I love that it is a local company first and foremost. And I really appreciate the fact that they are trying to lower the glycemic index of food. I would say though that I personally I'm not a huge fan of comparing white rice to brown rice. I think that a lot of messaging that we've been getting is to swap out white rice for brown rice. And I think that there's a huge misconception over here because rice is all healthy for you. White rice is healthy, brown rice is healthy, basmati rice is healthy. But the main concern at large here is that people are eating too much rice. And I think that portion control, instead of swapping out white rice for brown rice, is more important. You know, brown rice is healthy for you, but eating too much brown rice, just like eating too much white rice, is also unhealthy for you and can lead to weight gain and sugar spikes and is not diabetic friendly anyway. So in general, the bigger issue here is portion control, but I'm really looking forward to see what else Alchemy Food Tech comes up with. Mycoprotein is a plant-based protein that comes from fungus. And products made with mycoprotein are becoming more popular. It has long, thin fibers that imitate the texture of meat and this is why it is used as a popular meat alternative. One main benefit is that it can help you feel fuller for longer as compared to eating regular meat protein. And this is great because it can prevent overconsumption. It is also lower in saturated fats as compared to lamb, beef or pork and this can result in a lower risk of heart disease. Microproteins can imitate the taste and textures of things like nuggets, sausages, patties, steaks, and all these other types of meat products. The two most popular brands for microprotein in our local supermarkets are Quan and Beyond Meat. So today, I will be trying out Quan Crispy Nuggets and Beyond Meat Plant-Based Patties. I'm gonna taste test the Quan Crispy Nuggets against the regular chicken nuggets. Okay, just by appearance alone, it's very obvious to me which one is the crispy chicken nuggets. This looks like the fast food restaurant that we go to all the time. The Quan 
nuggets is not as golden as the regular chicken nuggets, but it still looks inviting. In terms of the texture, it's very obvious that this is deep fried and crispy. This one um, looks like those, you know when you were younger, your parents might have bought for you those like supermarket frozen chicken nuggets. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. So I'm gonna have a regular chicken nugget. This gives me memories of the time that we all did the 5,000 calorie challenge. That taste of like chicken nuggets in a long time. It just sings to your heart. I'm gonna have the corn nugget now. Mm. If I didn't tell you that this was corn, you would have thought that it was chicken nuggets. Even the texture, it's very uncannily similar. You know what? I'm gonna say that I prefer the corn crispy nuggets. I guess the only difference is that it's not as deep fried tasting as your regular chicken nugget, which actually can be a really good thing because sometimes when you take too much deep fried food, it makes you very dehydrated and after a while, it, you feel a bit like sick of the, the deep fried flavor. But with this, I can imagine eating quite a lot of it actually and not feeling too sick. For a crispy chicken nugget, it's about 2 grams of saturated fats per 4 nuggets. But over here, we have 0 0.6 grams of saturated fat per 4 nuggets, which is really low and significantly lower than your crispy chicken nuggets. It's still quite high in protein. I'm pretty surprised that it has 7 grams of protein. Objectively, this is lower in saturated fats, which is always good for your health. But I think it's also important not to overeat too much of this because it is still a processed food item and eating too much of it is going to result in weight gain. It is not vegan friendly, I have to put that as a caveat because they do have rehydrated free range egg whites inside so there are still animal proteins in this so it's not completely vegan. So now I will try the Beyond Meat plant-based patty and compare it to a regular beef patty. So looking at both of them, the Beyond Meat patty looks more charred and baked. The one on my right looks like it has peppers on on it, it looks lighter in colour and a lot thinner. Now to the taste test, I'm going to start with the regular burger. So I'm not a huge fan of beef patties in general. It just kind of has this very artificial process taste but it is really moist and I can tell that this is your regular beef. Now to the Beyond Meat patty. The texture is completely different. It doesn't look like beef in my opinion, it looks like a falafel if you know what that is. I am not a fan of the Beyond Burger because it has this very like processed mock meat aftertaste that I recognize when I've tasted a lot of other kinds of mock meats. It's not very appetizing to me. Perhaps if I ate this with sauce and a burger bun and with a lot of lettuce, it can kind of mask that processed aftertaste. It's definitely not as moist and as tasty as your regular beef patty. In terms of microprotein beef substitutes, I have tried the Impossible Burger and I would say that it was really delicious, you know, like I almost didn't know that it was not beef, it tasted like regular beef. But for this, I think that there are probably better ways to prepare this that will make it taste even nicer, but on a whole, I'm not a fan. My overall thoughts about microprotein is that I think it's a awesome concept. I think my only issue with it is that microprotein is really expensive so if there was a higher demand for it then I think it would drive down the cost of producing it and that would just make it a lot cheaper for all of us. And if it were cheaper, people would be more likely to want to try it out. In general, I think that microprotein is a great alternative for people who are trying to start a plant-based diet. I think it's really encouraging to see all these sustainable food options. I think back like five years ago and I would never think I would see Impossible Meats or Beyond Meats in supermarkets or at local restaurants. It's becoming increasingly more accessible and beyond that, I think it's really amazing how science and technology, especially in food and wellness, has developed um, because we have so many different alternatives and options nowadays. It's great that all also, people are becoming more receptive and open to this idea of eating more sustainably. And I think you know, people have that mindset that we are trying to save the earth because you know, we do not want to rely so much on animal products and depleting our resources. I would most definitely be more inclined to adding these options into my diet and encouraging more people to try out and do the same. Of course, there are a lot of other misconceptions out there and with all these like new products, they are processed food items. So you have to be a bit more discerning, read your labels and do your research. Of course, in my opinion, nothing beats a fresh 
plant-based diet. So you still got to eat your vegetables, your greens, and all the plants that grow from the ground because uh, they still contain the micro and macronutrients that are essential for us to be healthy. However, there's definitely no harm in trying out all these types of products and seeing how they fit in your diet, especially if you're someone who's trying to transition to a more plant-based diet. I think that all these like fake meats and these little products that help to make your food just a bit healthier for you, it doesn't hurt to try. That's all I have for you for today's video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other foods of the future that you want to recommend. I would love to try them out for myself. And if you're not ready to try out Cricut Powder just yet, then go and download the No Sweat app. I have some Asian-inspired plant-based recipes available over there that are healthy, tasty, and easy to make. With the app, you'll also get personalized workouts that are tailored to your fitness goals. As a member, you get perks like one-on-one -on -one fitness assessments from me. I do personally respond to everyone who writes to me on the app, access to live chats and live stream workouts, and even exclusive invites to our meet and greet sessions. When you download the app, you'll get your first seven days for free, and after which you have the option of signing up for a one-year, three-month, or one-month subscription. And if you sign up for the one-year subscription, you also get a free set of no sweat resistance bands. We also have a merch store where you'll find other useful supplements for your home workout. So go on over there to check it out. Lastly, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you never miss a notification every time we post a new video. Or you can download the Click Network app to watch our videos over there. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay healthy, be well and take care. Bye!